right. Uh. Who's ready for a really fun day? Oh boy, am I? Not me. I oh it. my god, I didn't prepare at all today for my prayers to the moon. Oh, that's okay. I had a whole week. You have twenty nine. You have twenty nine images to go through. I'm sure one of them will help you pray to the moon. <laughs> Yay! Should I we look through you. them now? No, don't open any of them. <laughs> I so I shouldn't have opened them all. No, did any of you actually do that? I will beat you up. No, no. Beth, in the middle of you sending <clears throat> images, um, my ADHD brain immediately forgot you, what you were doing, and I opened the channel and I was like, "Ooh, what are these?" And I almost, I, I was like, "Wait." <laughs> Uh, I, I heard uh, everyone except Maxwell verbally uh, confirm that they hadn't looked at anything. Max, have you secretly looked at something? No. Max, are you lying? I don't, I don't believe Max. I also I, don't believe Max. No, genuinely, I, I just don't know how to not sound suspicious. I haven't looked at anything. Max equals sus. It's true. They both have three letters in the name. M-A-X-S-U-S. <laughs> oh. Does that also make me an ass? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they also each have one uh, vowel. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, it's it's and, connected and two consonants. So you know, do with that information what you will. So, like, if your name was C S E A, you'd have two vowels, and you'd be a lot less suspicious. I'll get right on that. Okay, I'll start filing the name change application. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what's going on, everyone? Well, you know, do you guys want to get into it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to uh, remind us what happened last week? I I don't. I uh, oh. Every everyone's saying no. I was like, someone's gonna say yes. Someone's gonna say yes. Is no. That didn't. That um, didn't happen. So we recorded a double last week. So if I did the recap, it might include stuff from two weeks ago. Is the thing. we can we can do. But it. I think that's okay and acceptable because it was technically a previous episode. So. It, it starts just started pre funeral coffee. It's true. Oh, okay. That is where we started that one. So we went to pre funeral coffee, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> Anderson had the worst morning that uh, a person could possibly have. Um, his jacket got uh, baby froed up on, um, and then it was cleaned off with coffee. So he ditched it and he went business <laughs> casual to the pre funeral, funeral coffee breakfast. Um, Phoebe was there. Uh, she had to uh, pretend to be not Phoebe. Um, BB, I think, was that. I think yeah. someone called her. She, she, was, she was not an. She was not the author of famous book uh, about Sinzaba, New Sinzaba. Um, so you know, living her best life, uh, avoiding the public. Um, Cornelius went and uh, asked Lily to put Nemlington's ring on. Um, she turned into Cornelius for a brief moment, and then he left without giving her any more information than that. Uh, they all went to Adelaide's funeral after this. Um, at the funeral, we had everyone in the whole town basically just standing around outside uh, because something went wrong. And when we got there, uh, Henry was like, You people, get out! And then he realized it was us, and he was like, You people, get in here! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, so Atticus clipped my mom's legs through the casket? <laughs> um, at which point we looked at the casket and her legs were just kind of sticking out of it. Like, you know, whoop. Um, Anderson tried to put them away. Uh, broke her foot, clean off her whole leg. Uh, we ended up calling Sammy and being like, hey man, you gotta fix this shit. Uh, so they came back and they were like, okay. <laughs> It flipped her out like a sheet and laid her back down. Um, she kind of just got <laughs> stuck in a position. Uh, we fixed her. We put her back in real nice. Um, Ditchard and Dan Dara the Squeak Wolf were there. It was good. Favorite part of that whole episode. Highlight. Um, and then we uh, had a brief chat with Atticus, who said to uh, look at the ceiling uh, if you were to ask Anderson. Um, and then we went outside, and Phoebe and Anderson prayed through the moon. Uh, and graves were fucked up. They were big. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, you're... See, Anderson doesn't know this, but you need to... This is the second time you've omitted something <laughs> very important that Anderson and Phoebe don't know about that Cornelius went through last week. 
that I suspect is going to be important this week. So you should mention it here and probably not to metagame. Also tell your dear sweet friends about. Is it that uh, I have a little chat with Adelaide at her coffin? No, it's the parking. No, it's oh. not that. The parking. <laughs> it's the oh. parking. Yeah, I mean he doesn't. He doesn't care. <laughs> he's he's moved right past that. I know. He's completely forgotten about it. We walked outside and the reality was falling apart. He said, "I have better things to think about." <laughs> for the like, audience, like that sake, grave. For the audience's sake, can you please? Can you uh, please? Yes, recap for the that? audience's sake. Uh, Cornelius pulled up to the chapel after everyone else uh, and parked uh, in what he thought was very good parking close to the um, funeral home. And uh, when he got out of the car, he was actually very far away and had to walk quite a distance. Yeah. Yeah, he was um, far. That's he said, good. you know, I don't, you know, it, it, sometimes we make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we do away. make mistakes. And sometimes the solution is to tell your good friends about your little hiccup. Hint, hint. You know, he just he just ran into a casual time distortion. No big deal. It's fine. No big deal. <laughs> I, just, just I wasn't worried little about little it. Time distortion. Uh, He's moved on from it. To finish things up, um, before Sammy, uh, when Sammy showed up, they were they were kind of weird, uh, and when they left, they were also acting weird uh, and weirdly passive aggressive. And um, like uh, right at the last second, they did that like fun little Anderson knock thing, um, and then left. And then after they left, your phones went off. Specifically, Phoebe, you got a notification from Mason and Mango's website uh, for about the angel of New Sinsiba. And that's where we ended things. Amen. Okay, hold on. I forgot. I was Grace gonna... to the moon gets a text from God. I forgot the name of this episode is The Angel of New Sins, which is just New Sinsiba, but slightly shortened. Ha ha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that, that couldn't possibly be a play on words for anything that's going to happen in this episode. No. 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 All right. So, so Phoebe just got this notification. Yep. Is that correct? Yes. Phoebe, your phone blew up and you opened up this notification, which is a, a new breaking urgent story from Mason and Mango and pictured. Oh, shit. I forgot to upload this image. Well, you all saw it last week. I don't really think it's super important right now, but for the audience at home, it's a picture of Atticus in the evening, um, probably the night beforehand, uh, with wings spread out against the evening sky, the moon in the background, and her eyes are glowing ethereal blue white. And she's wearing this like big overgrown, over like, like too big for her shirt, probably what she got at Cornelius's house. And it's, you know, titled The Angel of New Sinsiba. Sweet. Moving right, right past that. <laughs> Should, should Phoebe, like, uh, show this to everybody? Up to you. Hey, guys, check out this cool story. It's not... It's definitely not real. Check this out. And she, like, shows you guys. Hmm. What do you mean it's... It's Atticus. It was a joke, dude. Oh, Just... Uh, oh, my God. So I did not... I'm sorry. That I did not sleep well last night. Yeah, no, that's fair. Me, uh, anyway. Yeah, no, this is this is cool, right? Who are Mason and Mango? Um, um like, <laughs> like, like cryptid, kind of cryptid they're, vloggers. They're like of? my yeah, they're like my long lost like cryptid cousins. Like, we're like not like legally? blood. We're not no. Oh. We're not like blood related. No, no, no. We're but like by the laws of like cryptid hunters, we're like cousins. Weird. I just feel like I've never heard of them before. Well, uh. Uh, oh, they could keep an eye on Samakis for us. Oh, I mean, they definitely already are. Actively? I, did you see the picture? Yeah, it was last night. Yeah, so they're, dude, they've probably been following her around all day. Okay, but well, Phoebe, can you, could you call them? Sure. Just, um... just be like, keep an eye on her for like two hours, right? How much... More time do we have? It's currently 11 a.m. How much so that time means... do we have? So we've got hours left. <laughs> you have <laughs> you have three hours remaining until you're um you're you're supposed to hear from fate. Yeah, they could. Yeah, okay, I could reach out to them. Hold on. Beep boop beep 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 boop beep beep. She says as she like goes through her contacts. 
<laughs> you um uh, and then she and then she dials yeah mason she she doesn't have like both of their numbers she just has one but it is titled mason and mango okay um <laughs> it's like the, their conjoined number actually when uh, it rings a few times <laughs> That's their and, business number. and they uh they answer uh in unison hello you hear them both go hello oh man hey mason and mango what's up guys it's phoebe phoebe uh mason says Fe- phoebe ballow yeah, you know, your cousin, like cryptid cousin. <laughs> Mango goes, Phoebe, if you're here about the article we just dropped, I want you to know that we got exclusive rights. No, that- listen, you can keep the, it's uh, it's cool. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. You can keep the article. Like, that's fine. It's all, uh, all you guys. But like, can you help us out? Uh, me out? You hear us? like them high five in the background. And then they're like, well, well uh, anything for our um, intelligent, beautiful um, definitely respecting our scoop cousin. What can we do for you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you like keep an eye on Atticus? Atticus? You mean Sammy? Yeah. Can you like keep an eye on Sammy for a little while? Just oh, like we they have... know her, but they know my first name. Uh, they're they're like, who is that? Is this a secure line? Phoebe, are you being hacked? What? No. Oh, oh my god, what is happening right now? Guys, <laughs> we just need help. Um, Mason goes, shut up, Mango, shut up, Mango. <laughs> Listen, Phoebe, we are already ahead of you. We've been following Sammy around since we bumped into them last night. Um, what? Yeah, we, no, we ran into them. Um, we were like, oh my god, an angel. Probably. And they were like, yeah. Um, and we've just been following them ever since. And um, he keeps telling us, quote, uh, go away and quote, please move. Um, but we're pretty confident that eventually we're going to get that exclusive scoop. I mean, if you guys follow Sammy around for the next like three hours, probably, I'd say you definitely <laughs> get the scoop. You hear uh, another high five in the background and they're like, Phoebe, we won't let you down. We're going to get the scoopiest scoop that anyone ever scooped. And You'll get that. Juicy scoop. And you hear uh, Mango go, oh, wait, there he is. And Mason's like, oh, fuck, he came back. Oh, we got to go. And they hang up. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that problem solved. We can trust Mason and Mango, I think. I, I, I like, don't know him. I've never met him. But if you say so. They'll definitely be around for at least the next few hours following uh, Sammy. Oh, yeah. They're pretty dedicated. Um, so that's taken care of, I guess. Cool. What do you guys want to do? Cornelius, you need to pray to the moon. Oh. Go pray. Go pray. Oh, man. <laughs> Childhood remembered. Um, Cornelius oh, man. takes a couple steps away from the other <laughs> two um, and stands awkwardly for a moment uh, before putting his hands together and then looking at his hands and then like locking his fingers together. And he's like, I don't. I've never prayed to the moon before. So sorry if this is wrong. Um, however, I think it's maybe best to reach out to the moon in this scenario. Um, because, like, what else am I going to do? So, dear moon, uh, I need help getting my friend Atticus unpossessed by an angel. Help, please? Thanks. I love you. Have a nice day, Cornelius. And then Amen. he stands there and looks at the moon. <laughs> Great. The um the moon looks at you moonily. Um, a cloud passes in front of the red moon, and then it unpasses. A few Did minutes. It work? A few minutes go by. It's quiet. Nothing's happening. And then Cornelius, uh, you feel a tug on your pant leg. Hello, I look down. You look down, uh, and behind you is a, um, a very bloodied, very bruised-looking, uh, little gnome man from the Red Velvet. And his shirt's all torn, and he's got a big black eye, uh, and he goes, Cornelius Miller Needlesser, what's your lit- Oh my god, kill it! Ah, no, 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 no! No, No. I I pick him up. (laughs) He, he, like, hugs you, and he's just like, had a day, man. Anyway, um, <coughs> I came to tell you that, um, fate is requesting your presence at the Red Velvet, please. 
Okay. Do you want me to bring you with us? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I gotta ride back. Don't worry. Uh, and I, I'm just looking for Phoenix Balo and Blanderson Rivers. Anderson Rivers. Uh, but, is but, it for the same? Is it for the same message? They're right there. Uh, he turns and he's like, oh! The, the Lady Fate formally requests your presence at the Red I'm Velvet. I'm already walking away. I'm, <laughs> wait, I'm walking <laughs> in my car. And he's All like, right. he's still going. He's like, it is a matter of great yep. peril and emergency. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and, and right. Are you good? Like, are you okay, dude? He's like passing out. He's like, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do I'm, you just gonna, a, I'm just going to take him with us. <laughs> <laughs> he said he had a ride. His ride's now us. <laughs> is it like one of those little like red and yellow toy cars? Like the, like, the cozy coops? <laughs> like nothing there but there is like um you see like a little farther down um back towards the funeral home um there's a sewer cover just like sitting precariously next to an open sewer hole <laughs> oh uh, cornelius close that before someone's child goes in there yeah, as you're holding him you realize you're kind of stinky <laughs> oh. nice um, well, I'm taking my suit jacket off, and I'm I, I'm 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 cuddling him, in a, come cuddle him up in it like a like a blanket. I'm taking him with us. Great, you wrap him up in a blanket, and he's just like he's like honk shoe, and he's going nuts. He's right. passed out. Excellent. Um, All right, where where'd you park, Cornelius? Do you need well, me to drive you over? I mean, I thought I parked pretty close, um, but then I got out of my car and I was on the other side of the parking lot somehow. So, you know, I just kind of like. I guess if you want to drive me over there, sure. It's not that far. How did you? Okay, I don't. Whatever. Listen, yeah, I don't. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't think about these things too hard anymore. Okay, great. <laughs> Phoebe, do you it. need a ride? Uh, Phoebe like looks around because she doesn't really remember where she parked. She's like, ah, uh, mm, Phoebe, I'm getting, yeah. I'm, I'm making a point to know. I get in the back seat of Anderson's car because the front seat is still coffeeed. It's true. Ew. Phoebe, I want you to know. I'm not sure where you parked. But yeah, I think your car <laughs> just showed up and her car disappeared. Your car's gone. Oh, uh, I think I need a ride, like not to my car. I don't know where it is. She like scratches her head. She's like, shit, that car was expensive. You hear like you click it, like beep 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 beep. You're waiting for any beep beep. There's nothing. Her car ah, just spawned. Good thing. Good thing I have the. Good thing I have the Blesla app. Thank God. You have a Blesla? Thank, thank God I can call my mechanic and he'll deliver my car from his face. Do you want <laughs> thank, God, thank God I can push a button and it'll, it'll teleport me to my car. <laughs> I was going to say, do you want to check your Blesla app? It, does it have like GPS tracking onto where your car is? Oh, yeah. Blesla definitely has that. And okay. she like opens up her Blesla app. Great. Um, roll me a D100. Oh, that's a lot. Hold on. <laughs> As the man who's been playing this game for five years. We don't have to talk about that. Um, um that's a 71. Great. Um, your when your app finally finishes loading, your your car appears to be um on Staten Island. What? <laughs> what where's your car? Did it did it drive? Hold on. <laughs> she like clicks her keys around again just to make sure. Nothing. She's like, yeah, no, it's on Staten Island. How did it get to Staten Island? <laughs> I think it was the autopilot. Like the, it, you know how it drives itself. It, yeah, maybe it's Staten it, like, Island, Chuck. Dude, do do I have Herbie? Do do I own Herbie? The, uh, Her no, Herbie. Oh, the. <laughs> uh, uh, why don't you just get in the car and we'll drive over to the Red Velvet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, so you guys all pile into Anderson's car. Yeah. It smells, yeah. like, overpoweringly of coffee in the car. Gee, it sure does smell like coffee in here for some reason. I don't oh, want to talk yum, about yum. it. Yum, yum. Can, can I put the elf in the coffee seat? <laughs> yeah, you put the, <laughs> You go to put the elf in the coffee seat, Um, but the jacket's empty. He is not there anymore. Oh, jeez. Whose turn was it to watch the elf? He stunk. Listen, I didn't want I, to go near him. He, Did you listen, drop him? Just, no, he despawned. It's, <laughs> I, I'm just going to assume that they despawned. On. He hit, he hit zero HP, and he said, I'm going to head out. The two of you are so <laughs> calm about that. All right, I'm, I drive Cornelius over and then uh, drive Phoebe and myself to the Red Velvet. Great. Um, you guys start heading to the Red Velvet. Um, 
it's a pretty quiet, easy ride as you guys get going, you back out of the parking lot, and there's a lot of people still going and like arriving to attend this funeral. And as you keep going and you keep going, um, the streets are getting like quieter and quieter, and there's not many people driving around. And Cornelius, you're driving your own separate car, right? Great. Um, <clears throat> here's what happens. Anderson, Phoebe, you go under a bridge. And as soon as you drive underneath the bridge, um, the positioning of the sun changes. So whereas it was pretty much overhead, it wasn't really blinding you guys at all, um, as soon as you drive underneath that bridge, suddenly the sun is in direct eye line with you, Anderson. It is pretty oh. fucking bright. Oh, I pull down the sun visor. Great. It, it's fine. Otherwise, it's just very weird that it, like, rapid changed to blind the shit out of you. Cornelius, you watch Anderson's car drive under this bridge and then just blink right out of existence. Oh, um, dang. I should have gone with Cornelius. You, uh, <laughs> you keep- I don't have a cell phone either right now, so I can't do shit about this. You watch this go, oh, and then continue on. Do you pass under the bridge? No, I think Join I'll take us. a detour. Join us. <laughs> Great. No! You uh you stop just short of the bridge and you don't really see anyone in front of you. You reverse. And you know there's some back roads um that will get you into town. Uh so you uh you sort of like reverse, do a big old Yui and start going and going and going until you find yourself back at this exact same bridge. Hmm, I guess Come I'll go under us. the bridge. <laughs> With the confused trepidation, you also go under the bridge. And the same thing happens to you. As soon as you go under, uh, all of a sudden you're kind of blinded by sunlight, like directly in your eyes. And further up ahead, probably a good like mile and a half down the road, you see the back of Anderson's car. Still going. Okay. Um, I'm like driving. I'm like, Phoebe, what time is it? Why is the sun like this? Phoebe, like, looks around. Can she, like, see? Can she, like, make a roll of maybe some type of uh, brain measure to see if she notices that Cornelius is not behind them uh, at some point? Yeah, make a intelligence check. Uh, as Anderson, you ask Phoebe what time it is, and she doesn't answer. <laughs> She's, like, wildly <laughs> looking <laughs> around. Like, anywhere but the clock. She's, like... The Oh. The clock that's um, displayed right in front of you, Anderson. You just haven't looked at it. The clock on the car dashboard and on both of their cell phones. It's really bright in the car. He's trying to keep his eyes on the road. <laughs> uh, Phoebe did uh, get a success. All right, with a success, uh, when Anderson asks you what time it is, you go to glance at the clock, and it said you, I, your eyes catch the rearview mirror, where you don't see Cornelius, who was definitely, definitively right behind you about a moment ago. Huh. Well, I didn't look at the clock, but I can tell you Cornelius isn't behind us. I, like, look at Phoebe in the back seat, and I glance at the clock. You look at the clock. It is 1.55 p.m. Jesus Christ, how long were you at that funeral? Uh, I mean, funerals are long, man. We were only there for, like, 15 minutes. It's been three hours. Mm, I don't know. Phoebe, like, falls asleep. <laughs> Anderson is like, oh my god, where did the day go? He's, he just keeps driving. Great, you keep driving. Uh, and after a good another couple of minutes, Anderson, if you just glance in your re rear view mirror, um, you see Cornelius behind you. He's further behind you, almost like he probably got stopped somewhere, but he's still there. Baby, Cornelius is fine. He's he's right what? there. Bap, bap, bap. <laughs> and she does. like goes... <laughs> She rolls over. <laughs> he, got, he must have gotten stuck in the light at Wilson's. Yeah. Wilson's Bakery? <laughs> Wilson's Bridge Underpass Stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson's Bridge Underlight Stop Pass. Exactly. Yeah. Bakery. That's a, that's a really common place for traffic, all the traffic on the road. Actually, as you're continuing on, um, despite the fact that Cornelius, uh, in your car, I don't know if you're actively looking at the time, but if you happen to glance at your, um, your dashboard clock, uh, it goes from reading 11.07 to uh, one fifty five. Ew. Hmm. Man, it sure would be cool if I had a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I start driving faster to catch up with uh, Anderson and Phoebe. Okay. I say after a couple of minutes, you guys are right, like, practically right behind each other again, and you're starting to close in on the downtown area. Oh my god, that's a lot of traffic. You guys start pulling into the downtown, and... 
yeah, holy shit, it is jammed. Like, everyone who wasn't on the regular back roads is here in town, it seems. There's people milling around. There's actually, there's people running. Um, they're going in every which direction. Um, there's cars abandoned in the road. There's cars lined up. There's honking. People are screaming. Um, you see signs that don't make any sense, like just scribbled writing. You see stop signs that are far too big. You see cars driving that are far too small. It looks like pandemonium. Oh, so yeah, that's we, what the red velvet guy came in. Yeah, did the are the gnomes just like driving everywhere right now? Like they got a bunch of people to like deliver to fate. Uh, no, no, something ain't right. Like, look at that, look at that sign over there. Oh yeah, hip, hippo bop. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can read. So I don't know. Am I having a stroke? Are you having a stroke? Uh, One of us is probably having a stroke. She like waves at Cornelius. She's like, hey. <laughs> is the is the is the traffic like enough to, for me to just pull over and park and then just walk over to Anderson's car? Yeah, you guys are that they're currently driving. You guys aren't moving at the moment. Um, like cool. This, I'm gonna park. Okay, you park off to the side and you see Phoebe yeah. waving at you from inside Anderson's car, who's inching forward at a snail's pace. I'm I'm walking up to the car while it's still driving. I'm laying on the horn and beep beep. Get out of the way! Come on! I got some gnomes to see! So, do you guys want to just, like, park up front of Phoebe's uh, like, and then, like, jumps. walk the rest of the way? <laughs> she didn't see you. She <laughs> was so waving to me and immediately went back to sleep. <laughs> it's terrified when I manifest. Alright, Anderson, uh, parks the car and gets out and flips off the guy in the car in front of him. Like, come on, buddy! And then he walks away. He turns to you and he goes, You wanna go? Uh, we're going. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> he just stares at you as you walk. <laughs> um, and you guys are walking down the street. Um, First one this fucking man. sucks. I hate this. Keep, you keep going down the street, getting further and further into the downtown, towards where the Red Velvet is, and it is getting thicker. There are more people wandering around, more people running. There's a few people running and screaming, uh, much to the confusion of others. Um, but the cars are backed up. And it is clear at this point that if you hadn't parked your car, you probably wouldn't be going anywhere at this moment. Um, and you just you keep walking. It's taken a little bit. Um, you hear people mumbling about like fucked up buildings and weird signs and people yelling at each other. Good five minutes later. What's a... Uh... What's, what are we looking at? Huh. Here's what's happening. Uh, as you guys move, is that a plane? As you guys Fine. move further and further in, all of a sudden, you find yourself uh, shocked because of the situation unfolding in front of you. Despite the the clear, not exactly warm weather, but it's mild. Um, it's snowing. It's snowing. And the snow's building up on the streets. There is a plane sitting in the sky, frozen, almost like it's hanging by wires. That is also very slowly just breaking apart. Um, cars like Thanos snapped. Like Thanos I, snapped. It's I, just I'm, pick, I'm pickpocketing Anderson for his phone again. Great. Uh, roll <laughs> stealth. I, I'm I'm doing it blatantly. Oh, okay. You have to be entirely aware that I'm 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 going. You shove your hand into, into his, his pocket, into his butt pocket, uh, and grab his phone. Um, I'm calling. I'm calling Sammy. Okay. I'm calling Atticus. Call, I'm calling me. You call your own phone, and after another couple of rings, are you just doing a video? Are you doing a video call or a phone call? Just a phone call. Okay. They answer and they go, "Hello, Cornelius Miller. I'm sorry. I don't have the time for this at the moment." Um, would you happen to be the cause of the deteriorating state of reality? At no, the no, 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 no. And then uh, you hear uh, silence for a minute, uh, like a cracking sound. And then after another minute, minute of silence, you hear someone pick up the phone and they go, Hello? Hi, is there an angel above you right now, by chance? Oh, yeah, I just saw her. She just, like, went into a building. It was crazy. Okay, um, well... The building's floating. She's pulling people out of it. This is oh. wild. <laughs> That's crazy. Can you, uh... What's your name? <laughs> you... I'm Pretty Steve. Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> who oh, is this? I'm Stephen Blur Blinkley, um, and I just got pulled out of an airplane, um, and now I'm watching a woman save um, a free-floating building. 
That's cool. Can you say something about an airplane? Can you turn on Find My Schmyphone for me? Thanks. He's like, yeah, no problem, buddy, and he hangs up. Okay. <laughs> uh, I put Anderson's phone back in his pocket. Um, well, Sammy's pulling people out of levitating buildings, and uh, I guess that airplane, and I point to the airplane that's deteriorating in the sky, um, and I say, so maybe we start running to the red velvet. Yeah. I start fucking booking it. I'm like, at the very least, there's no snow. There's probably not going to be any deteriorating planes. I'm, I'm booking. All right, wonderful. You guys start fucking running down the street. Uh, and true to uh, what Steven said, um, as you guys get further and further in, uh, in the sky, buildings are starting to detach from the ground and float up. And if you look to your left, you'll see half of downtown Sinsba levitating three to five feet in the air. Oh, Jesus. Polygons. Yay. Polygonal. Wow. The and sky is fucking polygonal. Anderson. No, this skybox is kind of fucked up. You specifically look to your right and see the cube, your former workplace, your campaign office. You're almost summoned a demon town. Um, the cube is no longer a singular cube. Uh, it looks like it has deconstructed itself into a series of smaller cubes, um, and that cube is spreading into the sky. The clouds themselves are becoming cubes. Yeah, we're By the way, them. if you're not listening to this on uh, YouTube, uh, you can see these images, I think, in real time, as long as Beth's updating everything. Oh, I am. Don't worry. So, uh... The mega cube. As you guys get even further in, you're getting really close to where the um, the red velvet is. Uh, you can see uh, that abandoned brick building off in the distance. Um, th uh, something the is fucking wrong. It looks like this building over here, like the bottom part of it, just turned into a bunch of small cubes and conjoined with an entirely separate building, just classically sitting right on top. Uh, and you see Sammy actually physically just pulling people out of this building, setting them on the ground, and then flying right back in and pulling people out. And Anderson, of all people, you he see, first you hear, and then you see your wife Rose down the street yelling. Babe? Uh, she like turns and she goes, Hi, fuck! What are you doing here? Directing the town, the, the town's dying! I don't know what's happening! I don't know if it's dying. It's becoming very abstract. It's something's happening, and thank God for Sammy, Atticus, whatever. It's the only person who's been able to get into it. There's no doors! No, these building, this built, this, the windows on this building are not real anymore. People can't get out. It's, it's really fucking bad. I don't know what you three are doing, but if you can fix it, I need you to fix it now! Uh, we're gonna we, try. What did we do? Did, did our prayers to the moon upset it? Oh my god, did we have set the moon? moon. I'm so sorry, I take it back. <laughs> the moon. Hey, I need you to pray to the moon. She's like, I'm not praying to jack shit, I think the moon did this! Yeah, that's what we we're saying. We accusing the moon of things. Uh, Sammy <laughs> pokes their head out from the building, and they're like, panting heavily, and they're like, Is that everyone in this one? Uh, and Rose looks up and goes, I don't know! And Sammy's like, <laughs> Okay, it goes back in. <laughs> okay, well, apparently Mason and Mango aren't doing their job. Babe, I need you to keep an eye on Samicus until we fix this. As Rose is like, oh, okay. I mean, uh, she gets, she like walks up because she was like kind of just screaming down the street and she goes, um, is, is she supposed to be like bleeding black? Is that normal? I don't, uh, babe, when I tell you I don't have fucking time to deal with everything that that angel starts doing, okay, that's one of them. That's one of them. We gotta, we gotta get down to the red velvet lounge and casino, the, the, the fucking, the mirror lady, the giant, the hot mirror lady, she wants to talk to us, and I think she, she's gonna be able to fix this, but we gotta get there, we gotta get there, so I need you to watch Samicus, please! Going to gamble at a casino while the world... No! No, it's not gambling. Did you call you know, Faith hot? <laughs> Well, she is. Wait, Rose is like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I give her a oh, kiss. Oh, sorry, I called you out. My bad. I give her a kiss and I say, all right, we got to go. Uh, keep an eye on the angel, please, because she dropped her fucking phone. And we'll be back. We're, we're going to fix this right now. And I start booking it. Before Phoebe takes off and books it, she's going to text Mason and Mango the conjoint number and be like, are you okay? But it's just one word. 
Like it's Mason, all letters and it's just one word. Mason texts you back and is like, oh my god, better than okay. We got trapped in a building, uh, and we got a picture when we got um uh when we got rescued of the angel up close and personal. And okay. I would like very briefly, I would like you to change uh to <laughs> image number twenty nine, please. Oh twenty nine? I think we skipped a oh. few. Yeah, I forgot to upload this one. <laughs> Oh, wow. Jesus. Oh, she looks great. That's not normal. Is she doing something different with her hair? Yeah, Mason's just like, yeah, I don't know. She's like dripping all this stuff. Anyway, super cool, right? In text message form, do you, Phoebe? Uh, she just ignores it. She leaves them on red. <laughs> right, you get, like, you get like 15 more messages, but you ignore them. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy. I don't want to read any of running, that. Sorry, running, sorry, running. Okay, hold on. And what's the very, very last one? Here we go. Okay. Um, and as you um, decide that, fuck, all of this is fucked, I don't really know what else to do, you keep running down the street, please change to your last image, image number six. Yeah, sorry, just got to scroll back up from 29. <laughs> sorry, guys. Wow, good colors. Oh, t- <laughs> why is well, it so good thing we're passing the just into this building. These you these got... people who are wearing the same attire need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> the identical of tuplets of Sensiba. Oh no! You guys make it down finally to the red velvet. You see that abandoned brick building, except it's also now um the conglomerate of what looks like a like a couple dozen other buildings floating on top of it. Um, the sky is somehow clear, and yet it's still snowing like further down the street there's like this really cute new like entrance way um that like leads into a flower shop that also looks like it's cutting into the red velvet so it's clipping oh that's cute we should go it's into that cute entrance. entrance all right i'm running into the cute entrance go 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 <laughs> you guys go into the cute entrance and there's like a lady uh at the flower shop and she's like eyeing uh this like big glass wall which is overlooking the red velvet itself and she's like hello um we're closed because yeah, okay. we're, we're not, no, we're we're not, not shopping. We're, we're just, we're just passing yeah, we just through. Don't, don't mind us. <laughs> are we all like in a blur? <laughs> She's like, I think we're renovating. But I, I'm, I I'm, we're I'm gone. Past we're gone. Right, you guys blow we're past her. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys are, well, you go to blow past her, but there's like no entrance. It's just a wall, a big glass wall um, where you see a bunch of these little like, um, gnome guys like staring down the flower shop lady looking really confused i'm waving break at them. the glass knocking, wall break the knocking, gla- I, knocking on it and on the glass um, break it like, can we come in they're like huh we were invited we were invited fate's it, waiting for us guys i don't use the main entrance dingus we can't where the fuck is that fuck maybe like, punches the glass <laughs> God. Is there like this this is a flower shop right are there like yeah. any like heavy flower pots around while you do that, uh, while you look for a flower pot, Phoebe, make a strength check for me. And then yeah, that's, Cornelius, no, that's no biggie. Cornelius, oh. make a luck roll for me. Or no, uh, spot, not, not a spot, you make a luck, luck check for me. Uh, Phoebe, what's your strength check? Uh, let me tell you exactly, because I know I succeeded, but give me one sec. Yeah, that's a hard success. Okay. I just passed that. Great. Here's what happens. Phoebe, in an act of frustration, you uh, jam your fist into the glass. Uh, It doesn't shatter, but it does splinter. Uh, Your fist hurts like a fucking bitch, uh, but you're okay. Uh, Cornelius, as you turn around, you find um, this little gray flower pot, except it's totally filled with bricks. Perfect. (laughs) Um, I'm I'm gonna throw that shit directly at the spot that Phoebe shattered. Okay, make a... Actually, you also make a strength check for me. Sorry, one of my um, littlest pet shop Tamagotchis just flew off the shelf. <laughs> um, yeah, they're flying off the shelves. <laughs> uh, you said strength? Yes, please. Uh, hard success. Great. You throw it at the window and it shatters. Raining glass all around you. And the flower shop lady is just like, well, now we're really renovating. You're renovating. Uh, Great. Sorry I'm, about I'm, that. I'm, we'll, I'm uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and shop when we're open again. Bye. Uh, and you run into the red velvet, and the uh, little elves form like a circle as you guys step over them, um, trying to like form a wall. Like they're climbing on top of each other and like forming a wall through 
where that window was. Um, and you guys keep running. The um, the casino <laughs> is still empty, uh, minus Adelaide, who is not there anymore. Um, there's still, like, a bunch of those little elf guys running around with those black curved knives, but there's a lot less of them than there were. Are you guys uh, winning? Uh, and they look at you and they go, No! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you keep going past them to uh, Fate's Chamber, which is, again, still open. The door is ajar. I burst in. Uh oh, burst. that's you poor manners. Oh, man. <laughs> Fate! Uh, you... I, I burst in and then stand in front of Anderson to block her from seeing him, but he's still <laughs> he's still loud. Fate! Uh, you guys burst in and, and Fate turns and glances at you and goes, Oh, thank God you're here. And oh, right on time. It is two o'clock exactly. Um, which doesn't make sense because you've been running for like 20 minutes. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you beat the time on the GPS <laughs> but it's quite different uh, she turns to you and she says thank you for coming I um I've got news I've got word it's just really really bad uh. Uh, it couldn't be worse than outside right now oh yes it can uh. Uh, so um my brother order not only did he not answer my summons, I um sent a few of my little um my my residents, uh, my helpers through to go through the passage since I can't pass that way. Oh, so you found the key? <sighs> yes, I found it. Where was it? It was under my seat cushion. Ah, oh, it's always under the seat cushion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I forgot about it. I haven't gone in there, and uh, you know I haven't needed to go in there in over a hundred million years. Um, this... So, more or less. <laughs> so, <laughs> give or take a few. Give centuries. or take a few million years. <laughs> <laughs> She's like the passage of time is confusing. I'm not in charge of that. Okay, um, so you went. They sent the blue men through the hole. Yeah, I sent a good probably a hundred. Only one of them came back. All right, well, no offense, but I'm built different, lady. Let us in. No. <laughs> let, no, I want to me... talk to him. I want to talk to Order. Anderson, uh... when your physical form falls apart at the seams, um, I'm demanding that the universe sends you back so that you can explain uh, that to Atticus. Fate, I want to talk to Order. <laughs> let me finish. So, they didn't even make it to Order. Because See, the I... door is locked. Not this door. The secondary door. Oh my god, it's under the cushion. Check under the cushion. I don't have the key. Did Can you check pick under it? the rock? Is it like those double-sided hotel doors where, like, you get one and the other person gets one and, like, it's kind of awkward? No, this is actually significantly worse because um, I didn't lock it. I can't lock it. I can't lock it from my side. The only people... And I use the term people loosely, who can lock it are my brother. Um, <laughs> they're the only ones who can. Well, how and, many brothers um, do you have? Wait, wait, we don't know what, what, what? It's, it's, it depends. Technically it's one or two. Um, it's probably just one, but it doesn't matter. The point, the point is the door to limbo is locked. Is he dead? Is, is your brother dead? There's no way he's dead. There, it's what? impossible. He was Reality like, he's disintegrating. No, there's no way he's dead. He is the original concept, the very first of us. He he wasn't even made by angels or demons. He came into existence. There's no way. There's no way something happened to him. That's just not possible. Something must be wrong. You can't and the get reason in I, here something, anymore. If something happened to him, uh, would it stand to reason that uh, the fabric of reality would maybe start uh, falling apart at the seams? question mark he looks maybe, maybe as uncomfortable as she could probably look and she goes i don't know uh, this has never happened and I, I don't i haven't seen any of this happen everything's fuddled everything's muddled the the, the it's fuddled and muddled my it's god fuddled and muddled. that's, that's I, how you know it's bad <laughs> i can't i can't see the path any longer i do not know where the world is going i don't I don't understand the uh, the amount of futures, the turmoil. It's everywhere. It's everything. I see nothing and I see it all. It's terrible. And I called you here. 
Because I have to ask the three of you to go. Because I, I can't go. And my residents, they didn't make it back. 99 of them died, I'm assuming. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Let us in there. Let us in there. I want to have words with the big man. Fate? Fate, you there, oh, buddy? She fell, she fell asleep. She's hey, she, she hey. fell asleep. Then she woke up. She was, oh, sorry, sorry. I've been awake for like 6,000 years and it really got up to me. Okay. Yes, I... I, I I have to ask you to go to, to to go to get into Order's chambers and ask him to please come to Earth and fix this because I don't there's no one who else there's no one else who can. I don't know why they locked the door to Limbo, but someone's going to have to unlock it and you're going to have to ask the um the guardians of Limbo to do so. They won't just do it for anyone. They certainly wouldn't do it for me. Um Hey, weird question. Not... Yes. Can you go to the moon? I can't leave this room. Could we go to the moon? You have a rocket, I suppose. Could you... Is there yeah. an alternative? I don't know, Anderson. Okay, well, uh, Atticus told us that the secret, and I thought we had to pray to the moon, but she said that the, the moon is the key or something like that. It's been a weird day. I don't really remember... Her exact wording. It feels like it's been a, a week, even though it's only she been a few like, hours. Something about like the key is looking up or something like that. Yeah, like, the key is keep your keep your chin up or something. Keep your friends close <laughs> and your enemies closer. I think what were her if exact she didn't words. Look up by by like like on the internet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Takes Anderson's phone out and Google's moon. <laughs> but, uh, you get you get a bunch of stories for like why are there two moons in the sky? <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, and she goes. I, I, frankly, I don't know. I've been a little preoccupied uh, with this door situation. Um, the moon, I mean, all I know about it from what I can see from here is it looks very similar to Heaven's second moon. Um, what does Heaven need with two moons? That's selfish. Okay. Yeah, they're keeping all I... the moons to themselves. <laughs> Jerks. Order's, Order's temple is called the Temple of Many Moons. That's, is I that, don't know. Moons are that, like their thing. Is that the Temple of Many Moons there? Is that the second moon? No, no, that's no, just no, like that's, that's just like second moon. That's just heaven's second moon. I mean, I you're very I've, calm I've, about this. Like it's heaven's second moon is just supposed to be in the skies overhead. Sorry, I'm not um, flipping my shit out. Do you want me to start screaming and yelling? Because I mean, I can. I'm just trying to remain calm and also to help you move along, Anderson Rivers. I'm very barely tolerating your presence at the moment um and the only reason i'm asking you for assistance is because i cannot ask your sister because she is very very possessed at the moment if that's heaven's second moon can we tattle on the angel yes if you if you find order you can tattle to your heart's content no, would you like, like to... would you like my seal so you can go into limbo and unlock limbo's door to get order to fix the world before all of everything goes bye bye forever if we're not supposed to go to the moon i guess so don't go to the moon okay i don't know why you'd want to go to the moon i don't know I don't even know how you managed to talk to Atticus. Are you sure you weren't talking to Sammy, who was just, you know, pulling your metaphorical leg? Well, no. Anderson was yeah. talking to Sammy in Atticus's brain. Um, that sounds complicated. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Here, she pulls out <laughs> she pulls out this little golden coin and she gives it to you, Cornelius, and she says, Yippee. This is my seal. Give this to Blasphemy or Ego and tell them to open the door for you on my orders. It is a matter of celestial life or death. Make sure to put it in that term, not mortal terms. They don't really care about mortals. Is Super okay. Ego busy? Yeah, Super Ego's busy being you. Oh, it's burn. <laughs> she destroyed. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> she gracefully... Uh, gestures to the door and she says they're not the most kind beings but they'll be very honest it's okay I knew Atticus when she just got out of the mob fake <laughs> 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 yeah. goes that's fair alright be safe <laughs> bye fate love you I'm gonna take him to be mean to me. Oh no. <laughs> My best used to be mean to me all the time. <laughs> Sick burn. 
Okay. You guys pass through this ancient gateway. Um, and as soon as you do, for a brief moment, your vision blacks out. And when you blink again to open your eyes, please open up image number seven for me. Please ah. turn to chapter 57 in your textbooks. Sorry, I got distracted by my own bit. Which number? Seven. 57. <laughs> 57. Whoa! <laughs> it's just like, it gives me the same feeling as when I used to enter my park. For no reason at all, I'm sure. When, it bl when you blink and reality forms again in front of your eyes, you are standing in an infinitely long hallway. These intricate, ordained uh, red tiles say out, step out before you with little slits in between them that peer down into this otherworldly nothingness. All along the walls, there are these paintings, old new ones crumbling, or like brand new ones, even blank canvases. People you don't know, um, important figures you do recognize um, and things that just don't quite make sense. And these lanterns lead you down the hall as you walk um, to a seemingly never-ending nothingness. It just continues and continues and continues for what feels like hours. Phoebe, I'll give you 20 bucks right now to find out what's at the bottom of this. Don't. Uh, can you just give me $20? No, I don't need $20 <laughs> actually. Uh, she, like, takes a rock out of her pocket, <laughs> and, yeah, she, like, drops it in, in there. Okay, you drop it into one of the little slits in the floor, um, and you just watch it, uh, evaporate. Like, it doesn't, like, fall. You just watch it, uh, sink just below the floor level, and then just, like, it's gone. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going in there. You guys keep going. Um, it's, the hallway feels like it stretches on forever. But after what feels like an hour, um, um... Um, while we're walking down this hallway, uh, I'm gonna say to the other two, so do we, like, think Ego or Blasphemy is cooler? I feel like Blasphemy is probably cooler, because I just feel like he's gonna get it more, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess they're both cool. Yeah, I just feel like Ego's gonna be very full of, full, like, full of himself. But, like, Blasphemy, I feel like is gonna be more down to earth. Okay. What do you think, Phoebe? Phoebe's like not listening. She's like singing a song. She's like, <laughs> she's like in her own fucking world. She was like, yo, this shit's tight. I'm gonna make a little tune right now. Like, she's like, damn, like, this place is sick. Good vibes. The acoustics are insane. Um, as you guys are having this discussion, um, eventually, finally. The hallway opens up at the very end. You can see this passageway that leads into a larger room. And the floor is now fully connected. There's no more of these inner, like these inner spaces. Um, and the pictures on the hallway start to thin out and become more intricately adorned, um, more like older and more beautiful. They're also, they seem to be very, not people. They're definitely not people. They're like these almost tarot card drawings essentially that depict something that you can't necessarily comprehend so if um, you turn to picture 37 you'll see uh the full set of 52 tarot cards that beth generated for us today i do have don't don't even don't even at me <laughs> i did generate games. tarot cards and then i was like i don't need 30 pictures <laughs> <laughs> i don't need 30 pictures <laughs> just 29. generates 29 <laughs> <laughs> And as you step into this um, open hall, it looks like an old hotel. It looks like the reception area, this grand giant hall um, of this old, old hotel. These golden, um, these golden windows line all the way up and these beautiful chandeliers adorn the ceilings. Um, there's many rooms, there's many floors, and it looks like it leads off in almost all directions. And as you're standing there, kind of probably a little confused, um, you hear someone go, Is that a visitor? Is that... Is that a mortal? Uh, and please no. switch to, no. to episode... To, to picture number uh, eight, please. Or, I'm sorry, number nine, please. Ew. Ew he's uh, kind of tall. Is that... <laughs> Nasty boy. <laughs> That's uh. a a shade appears in front of you, almost entirely out of um, 
of shadows. He's wearing a top hat and he's huge, lumbering. He almost just goes up completely two floors. Um, and as he walks towards you, uh, these black ripples of decay spread throughout the floor and start reaching towards you, curling around your feet and continuing on past you. Um, he Hello. approaches and he goes, Hello. Welcome to the land of the lost. How uh, how can I direct your souls? Oh. Oh, you're still alive. That's very strange. Well, how can I direct your souls anyway? We were sent by right. fate to find uh, ego and or blasphemy. He, yeah, he bows deeply and he goes, well, you found me. I'm blasphemy. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, young ones. Um, now again, how may I direct your souls? Are you looking for eternal suffering, uh, eternal torment, or um, answers beyond your comprehension? Um, order? Well, we're looking for order. Uh, we have this, and I show the seal, uh, oh. and I say, and it's a, it's a matter of celestial life or death. Oh, so you're serious about this, and he... He holds up the coin, looks at it, opens uh, a great black ball, and chomps on the coin a little bit. Oh. Pulls it out. It's all like it's like black and slimy now. And he's like, "Well, that's real. I'm shocked. Uh, fate doesn't typically deal with real humans anymore." Yeah, well, only those synthetic ones. I elbow. I elbow uh, him. <laughs> Sorry. He like he laughs a little bit and he goes, "Kinda." And he like points over to the corner and there is a stack of those dead elves. What does he's like? Oh, what, what so, happened to them? Oh, we don't let them in here. Oh my god, they were just they were sent on a mission, and you just this jumped isn't in... their this isn't their realm, and they didn't pass. So I don't know what you want me to do. Um, but Can if you pass, for, let me uh hold on that hold hold one second, and he goes and disappears. Oh, jeez, um, oh. damn, that's pretty cool though. And you hear um. You hear laughter, you hear um, some ethereal whispering, and then he appears again in one of the doorways a little further down, and he goes, yeah, if you want, um, Ego's, like, right over here. Come here, come here. Okay. Uh, Can we trust this guy? This like, guy... No, but, like, what he's... the fuck else are we gonna do? Hang out with that, guys? Uh, and I motion to the pile of elves. <laughs> Is there another way we can go? Um, yeah, there's lots of doorways, uh, but... Blasphemy is like still kind of standing in one of them, just like motioning for you to come here. Are you gonna kill us? I'm not. No. Oh. Uh, well, that that implies like somebody else might. Hold on. He turns and he goes. <laughs> Hold on. He comes back and he goes. Hey, our, our ego also promises that he won't kill you. Look, we're oh, not cool. interested in like the death of. Well, we are. We're not interested in specifically your deaths. Um. So if. Do you want to have a conversation or not? Yeah. yeah. I think we have oh, to. Come, come on! Okay. okay. Oh, man. Right. These guys are guy. kind of pushy. Go ahead. <laughs> They're a little pushy. Go ahead and switch <laughs> to, uh, to image number 10, please. <laughs> oh, he's spicy. Ah, that's, <laughs> that's an ego if I've ever seen he's one. He's Mr. Heatless. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of uh, our good old best friend Archimedes. Archimedes. He does look you a step, little Archimedes. You step into this hallway, um, and it's very similar to the other one. These go tall golden windows and these beautiful ornate pictures adorn the walls. Uh, there's even these like beautiful wooden carvings, um, like these slats of them up and down the walls. Um, and a man in a trench coat and a bowler hat with no face, who is, uh, the top half of him is just very strangely on fire. There's no res res residual heat that you can feel, but he looks very much like he just combusted a whole lot. Uh, and he goes, holy shit, you were totally right, he blasted me, they're- These three are alive, <laughs> what the fuck? Hello. Hello, mortals. Uh, so, let me get this straight. Fate sent you, you got the seal, and it's a matter of celestial life or death. Yeah, I mean, the fabric of reality is, like, disintegrating out there, so. Yeah, heaven's wow. second moon is, like, just chilling in low orbit. Is that this reality? Blasphemy, can you, like, open the book? Blasphemy's like, ugh. Okay, hold on a second. And he pulls this giant black shadow book out of his pocket, starts flipping through it. He's like, 
apocalyptic close and goes, yep, uh, this reality is falling apart. And Ego goes, <sighs> okay, okay, all right. I'm not really interested in just letting you guys trapeze through the land of the lost all willy nilly. And no, we'll lock, mortals... we'll, we'll lock like normal people through it. No trapezing. Yeah. Uh, again, not really what I meant. And your smart mouth is just going to make it worse. So, um, what do you think? Little, just a little game? And Blasphemy's like, I think a full on test. Uh, no, 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 years. What the hell? He goes nodding and he's like, yeah, you know what? I like, uh, I like exactly one of these three, and uh, I think I think a test is pretty fitting. Can I um, forfeit this test? Um, he goes, yeah, you can get two tests now, and then blinks out of existence, blinks back, and he goes, fuck, I'm fading out of reality. And Ego goes, okay, okay, well, we'll make this fast then. Alrighty, um, let me just uh, clap twice, and um, a new hallway opens up to your left, and he goes, alrighty, um... So yeah, if you can handle the passage to the Temple of Many Moons, uh, we'll happily let you go right on in. Can we is get it, like hint? suck in there? Is that is that like the is that the is that the test? Is that it fucking sucks in there? <laughs> is that the oh, suck yeah. chamber? Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, it, <laughs> it's it's very bad. Uh, the, what you're seeking and what you are hoping to find uh, does not exist for mortal eyes. Um, so yeah, if you um, I mean, if you want to go find it, you can. Uh, but you're gonna have to earn the shit out of that. And Blasphemy's nodding, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever actually passed any of these. Uh, those uh, those uh, little guys over there, they sure as fucking didn't." Can you uh, give us a hint? Because you're also fading out of existence, and it seems like we're the only ones who might be able to fix that. And it seems like it kind of affects you too, on a personal level. Um, ego, the guy on fire, um, brushes his chin and he goes, "You want a hint?" A hint. Or if you could just take us through. Blasphemy is just like, well, taking you through ourselves would defeat the purpose of this test. But um, here we go. I have I have a little um, uh, I have a little hit just for you guys, just for you guys. Um, and Phoebe, he turns to you and he goes, "You will enter the door of lost memories." He turns to you, Anderson. He goes, "You will enter the door of lost realities." No. He turns to you, Cornelius, and he goes, "And you will enter the door of lost hope." Uh -huh. My door sounds better than yeah, your guys. Uh -huh. No sucks. hope. <laughs> uh, and they're both gone. Uh, uh, what? Are there doors? There's one door now, uh, and it is labeled Lost Memories. Uh, that's me. I guess that's uh -huh. my ticket. Bye. All right. Do you think? Do you think we like? Do you think it's like a one-person type deal, or do? You could do what we did when we had to fight uh, our our or whatever. I say to I mean, Phoebe because Anderson was not present for this. Yeah, this is an A B conversation, Anderson. So uh, bye. Uh, and she... <laughs> 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 no, I'm just I'm just fucking with you. Um, I mean, I guess we could I we we could all three go in. It's not like the I mean, worst idea in the world. Like speed run our individual things. It's like fine. I don't care. Yeah. I'm, eh, mm, eh, mm. Okay. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, <laughs> bye. I say as we all go into the door. <laughs> yeah, as you all you all say goodbye to each other as you walk through uh, the door of lost memories. Go ahead and switch to number eleven, please. Number fifteen. Burger King foot lettuce. Wow. Burger King foot lettuce. So, before you stretches out a long, long hotel hallway. There's doors, weird, weird, strange doors all all along you. If you try any of them, they're all locked. Um, and at the very end of the hall, there's a single single glass door with these misty panes uh, titled Phoenix Ballow on it. That's you, bud. Uh, that's me. You open the door? Um, no. Okay, you stand in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Okay, but now. Do you open the door? I guess. <laughs> this is like <laughs> Professor Oak, like, do you want to take the Pokédex? No. <laughs> you Do you want to take the Pokédex? <laughs> <laughs> you wait a minute, nothing happens, and the door um, rattles doorily at you. <laughs> All right. Fuck. All right. She opens the door. You open the door, and all three of you white out in this hallway. 
Nice. Whoa! Yeah, it's like when you lose a Pokemon battle and. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this keep this. This place is like Pokemon. Yo, this place is just a Pokemon game. Thank you to Mango, Amanda Crondar, Morgan Woolbrand, Emmy Lynn Laderna, and Smarties for their continued support of the show. Support the show at patreon.com slash tincast to get thanked every single week. It's super awesome. We are actually going to take a break next week, so we will see you on April 10th. And don't look at your calendars. There is not going to be another episode coming. There's nothing special that is happening between now and, and April 10th. So don't, there's nothing. Have a good week. Drink lots of water. Bye-bye. Oh. 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 <laughs> you get two tests now. Dies. <laughs> well. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Hello. Hold on. <laughs> hey. He said, I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> <laughs>